It's a PZ world, bro. Real, you hear me? Niggas been wake up a dying ass sleep, bro. Real shit. Fuck it is, man. It's Pill Bellamy in this bitch. You niggas matter, no. Real quick, bro. Real quick, is you about to get straight to the beans and rice, you feel me? You about to get straight to it and yeah, look, look, look. <laughs> I had to bring the Jeffy back out, you feel me? Definitely for this video, I had to bring Jeffy back, back out, but you about to get straight to the beans and rice. So, we about to talk about this altercation, man. We got to talk about it, you feel me? Like, come on, we, we got to talk about it, man. We about to talk about this altercation between Tay Rock and Chess and, um, fuck, poetry snaps, poetry snaps. Keezy, his name, I believe the, it's Keezy, right? Yeah, I believe the brother name is Keezy. Yeah, because Three Letterman was calling him Kizzy. Three Letterman was calling him Kizzy, but his name Keezy. And shout out, shout out to yo, bro. Shout out to Keezy because he gave context to this entire situation. If y'all ain't seen that interview, go check it out, man. If y'all want to know the backstory and like what really happened and why he really was popping out to these events and why he feel a certain type of way towards Tay Rock, Watch the interview, man. He, but nonetheless, he gave context to the situation because all we had was the video. You feel me? All we had was the video of niggas swinging on him and him on the ground. And you feel me? Like, so niggas could have, like, you can add whatever context you want to add. Niggas can come to whatever conclusion they wanted. You feel me? So shout out to you for doing the interview. And we're going to talk a little bit about what was said in the interview. But first... The first thing I want to say is this, bro, because like, you, you know what the crazy thing is about this whole situation? I'm going to keep it a bean with y'all. Y'all y'all know, like, like this is not a safe place. The truth resides. All my words got squatter rights, bro. The sad part about this whole situation is this shit could have been avoided. Respectfully, bro. Respectfully to all parties, like, bro. This shit could have been avoided. And it was a word that Three Letterman kept using in that interview, bro. What was that word? Hmm. Ego. Right? He kept talking about ego. Niggas in their egos. Battle rappers in their egos. I got another word for you. Image. Right? How about perception? Because all that shit go hand in hand, bro. For this, bro, when I say this shit could have been avoided, this shit could have legitimately been avoided. They did not have to fight, bro. I don't understand, like, 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 what's wrong with handling shit peacefully? But we're going to get into that. You feel me? But niggas be too worried about their image. Niggas be too worried about public perception. This is why niggas act the way they act, bro. Especially in public. Especially when there's other people around. Especially when cameras get involved. Like, niggas be so worried about how they appear to the public. And Tay Rock, I'm going to keep it a bang with you, bro. I'm ready to put you on a grill, bro. Respectfully. I'm ready to flame your dumb ass, bro. Like... And I pose this question to all so-called black men, bro. All so-called black men. Like, bro. And, and I'm going to pose this question because what I'm about to get into is, like, very prevalent in our community, bro. Like, when did it become cool to be disrespectful? Real question, bro. Logical question, legitimate. When did it become cool to be disrespectful? Because now it seems like these days, like everybody want to be disrespectful, bro. Women, kids, old people, middle-aged people, just everybody is like, and especially when it comes to men, is like, what happened to respecting other people, bro? Respect don't cost you nothing. My mother taught me that at a young age. My father nailed that shit in my head, bro. I grew up saying yes, sir, and no, man. And no, my father was never in a fucking army. He was in and out of jail, so was my mother, but it was respect, bro. 
You feel me? You re, you give respect to get respect. And now it's like being disrespectful is damn near a part of being masculine. You feel me? Being disrespectful is it, it, like it's like as a part of being a man, it's like it's like it's like I'm not a man unless I'm disrespectful. It's like it's not cool to be respectful. It's like you damn we damn near look down on people or view people as cowards or bitches or or, or weaklings because they're respectful, bro. Now I'm saying all that to say, Rock, why did you have to disrespect this mother, bro? First of all, and once again, y'all go watch the interview because I'm what I'm about to get into came from the interview. First of all, he was addressing you about something that was said about the South. Now, three letter man asked him a question. He said, bro, sir, 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 do you think you were being a little bit sensitive? And he kind of like, man, maybe. I'm going to keep it a bean with you. You feel me? Because I ain't got no dog in this race or horse in this race or however the saying goes. You know what I'm, I'm I'm putting both of you niggas on the grill respectfully, you feel me? But definitely Tay Rock, because like he kinda like escalated it. But bro, like the South is the South, but like he you're not even from South Carolina, bro. Like, let's just keep it a being. You're from Atlanta, like what he was talking about, uh uh the representation of you feel me, uh, people in the South. It wasn't, it it wasn't a a broad representation of everybody in the South. What he was talking about was specifically designated for people from the same place of swamp, bro. And it was in his battle rap. Like, come on, bro. Like, y'all y'all niggas took that shit too far, bro. You niggas was crying. Like, stop what you're doing, bro. Stop what you're doing. So I, I kind of didn't agree with you even. I mean, uh, like initiating. You, you kind of sparked it. He, he he took it further. You feel me? But you sparked it by like 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 making it an issue. You know what I mean, and you're a battle rapper, so you already know how this battle rap shit go. Like it's my job to say this kind of shit to my opponent. I mean, but nevertheless, it still don't justify him disrespecting your mother. So let's get back to that. So why did you have to disrespect his mother, bro? Now, I'm not going to assume that you're saying that his mother was deceased. Maybe he had, I don't know exactly what he had in his bio, but he said he had something in his bio. You feel me where it was evident that his mother was dead and you still said, fuck your mama too. I think you said, suck my dick and your mother too, or something like, something to that effect. I don't, I don't know, bro, but like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. God is real, bro. That shit could have went a totally different way. Respectfully, let's keep it a bit. That shit could have went a totally different way. Then they could have seen you and just bop, push this shit back, bro. He could have been on bullshit, bro. You feel me? Not saying that he wasn't no bullshit. I don't know. He said we're going to get into that. I don't want to jump the gun, but you know what I mean, like he it, it could have went a totally different way all because you're disrespecting people on the Internet that you may think that you may never see in real life. Bringing me back to the original point of this segment. Why? Why? Like, why is it so cool to be fucking disrespectful? Treat people the way you want to be treated. Do unto people as you have them do unto you. God is real. It's in the Bible, bro. You wouldn't want nobody talking about your mother, bro. You wouldn't want nobody disrespecting your daughters. You wouldn't want nobody disrespecting your father, your grandmother. Nobody that means something to you, bro. Nobody, bro. But yet, you disrespect people, bro. Constantly, bro. Like, you take it to another level, bro. It's okay, if you say fuck you... Use a bitch or whatever the case may be. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's along the lines of shit men do these days. You feel me? Preferably in battle rap. But to, 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 to say fuck somebody mother and suck my dick. Like always telling niggas to suck your dick. Suck my dick. SMD. SMD. It's like you be, yo, you be doing too much, bro. You be doing too much. You know what I mean? So if something would have happened to you, right? Let's say the roles were reversed and you are the one on the ground getting punched on, right? And, 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 
and, and Chess had to come to your aid, right? And that man came not by himself and with other individuals who were strapped and that shit led to somebody getting shot. Like, it would be hard for me to have sympathy for you because you said fuck his dead mother when you didn't even have to include her. It's like you niggas be trying to so hard to be disrespectful, but y'all not even savvy with it. Y'all not even clever with it. Y'all so predictable. Fuck your mother. Suck my dick. I'll fuck your wife. Like you niggas be so predictable with y'all disrespect, bro. You feel like there's nothing witty about it. Like that's the like you niggas are goofy, bro. Respectfully, bro. You niggas are goofy, bro. And Tay Rock. I'm telling you, bro, that might be a sign from the most high, bro. Like, next time, next time you're being extremely disrespectful, right, and you're saying shit that's unwarranted, next time you could really get hurt. You feel me? This time, he happened to get the short end of the stick, but next time, you could happen to get the short end of the stick, bro. And Chess ain't going to be there to save you. Three Letterman ain't going to be able to do an interview with a nigga trying to, you feel me, uh, 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 push him in the right direction and trying to, you know what I mean, bring peace in the situation. Like, you feel me? Ain't nobody going to be able to save you from the wrath of the most high, bro, because you be doing too fucking much for no reason, bro. You feel me? Then you want to brag about it. Yeah, y'all keep running up on niggas thinking I'm an almost fight nigga. And you going to get, like, whatever the fuck you said, bro, you still are almost fight nigga. Fuck is you geeking for? Respectfully. You still are almost fighting, nigga. You swung on one nigga. Well, you did swing, you did punch the dot mob, nigga, but that was a minute ago. But you okay, you you can you happen to connect the one nigga jaw, bro. That don't erase all the times you almost got into a fight. I'm sorry. I, I'm fucking sorry. It is what it is, bro. You might have told me yes. Once. That don't erase the 12 other times you told me no. Like, no, bro, no. Like, you're still an almost fight nigga, okay? And tell the truth. Maybe maybe you are telling the truth from your perspective. Maybe you thought he was running up on you. But according to Keezy, he was trying to have a peaceful conversation with you. He asked to talk to you privately, right? You started being defensive, and then at some point you started woofing, and then it turned into a physical altercation. When you could have just been a man, right, and stepped to the side, which you was afraid like, that's the only conclusion I can come to. Like, what the fuck was you afraid? You were scared to talk to this man. You were scared he was going to swing on you. You were scared he was going to poke you up, right? You were scared he was going to throw you in a trunk of a car in the alley. Like, like you're a man. He's a man. Talk to the nigga. You already know, like, you're Tay Rock. You're at a battle rap event, nigga. Random fans will fight for you. Let alone your niggas. Fuck is there to be intimidated or scared about? Just talk to the man. You feel me? Just talk to him. Maybe you didn't like that he asked, do you remember me? Maybe it was his tone. I don't know. I, I don't know. Because I don't think Keezy is telling the entire story. You feel me? I'm not saying he painting himself to be a victim. I'm not saying telling a story where he making it seem like he did nothing wrong. I just don't think he's he's adding, you know, all, all of what happened. Like, I want to know your tone. How did you say it? You feel me? Your facial expression, like, did you have a meme or like, we, little small details we need to know because you never know why Tay Rock reacted the way he reacted. Like, we're going to be fair. You feel me? In spite of me not agreeing with him being disrespectful and talking about niggas, dead mothers, but we still got to be fair. We, so we're going to keep it a bean. That's what we do here. We get to the beans and rice. You feel me? Like, I, I, I like, I need to know, like, because if he, if, re, if he reacted like that, Based off of, you know, negative energy that he might have been feeling coming from Keezy, then it's understandable. That it still ain't okay, but it's understandable. But if it went exactly the way Keezy said he went, he just was calm trying to talk to the man. And you just automatically just went off the rails and turned into a whole nother situation and it became physical. Then that's a problem, bro. That's a problem because the nigga tried to resolve the situation peacefully by just having a conversation with you, trying to figure out exactly why you felt the need to disrespect his dead mother when he was just, you know, addressing some things or comments you made about the South. 
Now, when you put it all in perspective, you got to also see it from Tay Rock's perspective because at the time, he was being attacked by everybody, bro, because of that whole swamp battle and the raccoon shit. So I can imagine, you feel me, him being on guard and being defensive and feeling like everybody is against him and, you know what I mean, not be able to gauge, like, who's sincere, you know, who's dick riding, who really genuinely feel offended and, like, you know what I mean? But nonetheless, you didn't, it just, it's just ways to deal it's just ways to resolve shit as men, bro. And and we and for some reason we have been taught society have brainwashed us through movies, through music videos, through music. You feel me? It just it, they just fucking programmed us to think the only way we can resolve our problems as black men is by fighting it out, shooting it out, or screaming it out, bro. Why can't we talk peacefully like man, like men, and come to a resolution, bro? Why can't we just, you know what I mean, figure out another solution and shake hands and, you know, agree to disagree or go out separate ways and just dead the situation? Like, why everything gotta, gotta, gotta end with violence, bro? Now, I know some of you, 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 you fucking dumbass niggas, you know what I mean, wanna be tough guys and wanna be so gangster, y'all, like, get, 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 get your goofy ass out of here talking about all this peaceful shit. Get your, go to church, nigga. You scared to go to church. You feel me? But all the real individuals out there, all the real men with some kind of sense, you feel me, with some kind of wisdom, know, like, it, like who wins at the end of it? Nobody, bro. Nobody. Nobody wins, bro. When a family feuds, nobody wins, bro. And they tricked us, bro. They fucking tricked us because it goes back to the programming fucking that's been, you feel me, that that's been a part of our lives since we got off them slave ships, bro. Division, divide and conquer, us looking at each other as if we're not the same people, bro. Like we we don't look, we don't view our race in the sense of nationality, bro, in the, in the sense of being a nation. Like, we're one people, bro. We're one people. I don't have to come from your mother's vagina. You don't have to come from my mother's vagina for us to be brothers, bro. We have no real genuine love for each other because we look at each other as enemies and we don't view each other as family because we didn't grow up in the same household. Because we, But yet, every other race understands this concept. But they have programmed us to not view each other that way. We just automatically... Like, if you see a nigga you don't know, you're automatically on guard. You feel me? Depending on what gang he's a part of, or what block he's from, or what color he's banging, or whatever the case may be, you, you might view that nigga as your enemy off the rip. It's just like, come on, bro. Niggas gotta do better, bro. Niggas got to do better, bro, because that shit could have been avoided by one conversation, bro. You niggas think, in closing, bro, it takes more to put your pride to the side, to swallow your ego, and to actually have a conversation with another man and come to a resolution than to swing. Anybody can fucking swing, bro. Anybody can pull the trigger. Anybody can pull a knife out and stab somebody like, okay, bro, like it happens every fucking single day. It speaks volumes when you're the, when you're when you're able to do the opposite, bro. When you're able to come to a peaceful resolution, bro. To me, that speaks volumes about a man. That's that says more about you being a man than you fighting or you shooting a nigga and going to jail for life or whatever the case may be like. It says more like you, we are, it, it's crazy how smart niggas be claiming to be, how wise, how tough, and niggas is dumb and niggas are cowards, bro. Shoot matter, no.